What's up? What's up? What's up, everybody? Welcome to Tuesday Tea Time. I am your guy, Icky Timey. And of course, we're going to have an awesome another day with an awesome another human being talking about the good, profound, creative, and beautiful things they're doing in the world. Welcome on. Welcome on. Welcome on. Just before we get rocking here, I do want to say um, if you are watching along and this is your first time, welcome to Tuesday Tea Time. We see you out there. R.D. Lynette, good to see you on here, my girl. Of course, out to Jillian and to the rest of you guys, welcome on to Tuesday Tea Time. If you're new here, please consider smashing that subscribe button or the like button or the follow button and share this with people because every week, I guarantee we're going to bring something fun, something thoughtful, something uh, worth your time to engage with, all right? You could watch us or you could just listen on in your car without looking at the screen or while you're vacuuming or while you're doing the other stuff you're doing in your life. Welcome to Tuesday Tea Time. So today, I've got this, uh, this homeboy on with me. He's an author, a husband, a dad. He's a musician. He's a CFO. Simeon Shig is joining me to talk about his book, Manners from the Moon, Family, Life, and Faith. We're also giving away a copy of Simeon's kid book here, Manners from the Moon. So stay tuned with us. Hang on in there. And uh, at the end, we'll make sure that we pick somebody from in here to uh, get this book, especially if you got a kid. Trust me, it's, it's excellent. My kids loved it. They read it a bunch of times through. They started drawing the pictures and trying to write their own books um, out there. Yeah, it's crazy hair day, Chugs. I know, I know. Um, most of you are used to seeing me with my beanie on. This is probably the first time since COVID has started where I've actually not worn a hat. This is my my COVID do, as it were. Um, <laughs> no, you don't have to be afraid, Jilly. Go ahead and say what you got to say, girl. It's this is me. This is this is actually what it just looks like regularly all the time. So. Just before we get to Simeon, I do want to um, just give you a quick shout out about the Say Hello. Make sure you um, jump into www.sec.adventist.org forward slash say hello and drop your story in there. Share a little bit about yourself, about maybe during this COVID time, what you've been going through, maybe some struggles, maybe some stuff that has to do with how God has been faithful to you. And we'll make sure we share it. Also drop a picture in there. And every week I'll pop up a picture of you in here and share your say hello moment with everybody. Now. Next week, we have four powerful ladies who hold four distinct ministerial positions. They're pastors, they're ministers um, across four, at least four different states, or maybe maybe three states, um, across four conferences that are right here in our union. Check in to hear about their journey and get some tips on engaging faith in the real world. You're not going to want to miss it. Next week is going to be fire. But before we get to that, let's spend some time with Simeon. Simeon, my guy. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. What's up, dude? How you been, man? Good, man. It's such a pleasure for us to be able to connect here. I've been looking forward to this um, and looking forward to talking about this neat little book that you've just put out, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here today on Tea Time. My buddy, Pastor Hickey, appreciate you in my life and our relationship. Um, thank you. Yes. Hey, man, it's a real pleasure. All those years of spending time listening to you play the keys, teaching you how to play basketball on the on in the basketball court. You know, I just I just want to be able to yeah. uh, to make sure we bring that around. Right. Um, yeah. Teaching. That, what that's what we we'll call bro? that. Teaching. <laughs> um, today for a tea time, I have cactus cooler in my transformer goblet from my best friend, Bobby. Hello. In a goblet. Yes. Cactus cooler. Cactus cooler is sorely underrated, don't you think? Top five. Top five mm -hmm. sodas ever. Agree. I wonder if that's only true for those of us who grew up with cactus cooler as one of our staples. I mean, but if you didn't grow up with cactus cooler, did you really have a childhood? Like what? <laughs> what are you, what are you putting in its place? Right, right, right. Welcome on to Anna. Anna says, yay, Simeon. Yeah, Simeon. So um, thank you. Thanks for sharing what you're drinking with us, bro. 
we we're gonna spend a little time today. You you're an author now. I call you an author because you wrote a book. Um, yeah. and it's and it's actually it's actually a it's a good book, and in fact, it reflects it on Amazon. You've got like five stars from everybody who's reviewed it, bro. Congratulations. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, were, been going really well. The book that? came out in. Um. I wasn't expecting people to show me like the love and generosity that they did. Like I had a one buddy um, who told me he put it out to his network and he was going to match every book someone else bought. He was going to buy another book. So it was those kind of gestures of just uh, wow. friendship and love that I wasn't expecting that really um, made me feel very grateful that I got to complete this task. Yeah, man. Now, what is your actual professional expertise or occupation? Because it's not writing, is it? I mean, no. Okay, so that, what's on why. my W two? What I am paid yeah. to do from the hours of nine to roughly five? I am the CFO of a casino card room up in San Jose, and so I've been there almost five years. So I basically run the accounting department. Uh, I assist with managing the account team and as well as the uh, the cage operations. So those are kind of my main areas of focus uh, at the facility. That's interesting because individuals who are often really, really good with numbers who do those kind of fastidious jobs aren't the people that you would consider ones to write children's books as well with that much imagination and color. Um, and you've seemed to have done both of those quite successfully. Yeah, as I tell someone else, um, I think that storytelling is something that comes kind of natural to me and it kind of plays itself out in different ways. So for one, I play piano. So you can tell stories through music, right? Um, I mm -hmm. wrote a children's book and I, I write poems about my daughter and things like that. So that's one way to um, tell stories, but also financials. Like most people find them boring, but there's a way you can also tell <laughs> stories through numbers as well. So all the things are kind of connected. It may not seem like it, but storytelling is just something that I think comes naturally to me. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's wild. Because like by day, you're the mild mannered accountant who goes in to work and does a job. And by weekends, you that crazy pianist playing on the side that the pastors need to get them going. Uh, whew, yeah, I yeah. miss you on the keys. I miss you on the keys, bro. I miss you on the keys. <laughs> yeah, my mom was actually up here this weekend. And we spent some time kind of going through old songs that I had forgotten how to play and kind of working through uh, stuff me and my mom would sing and play back and forth uh, in church service all the time. So it was interesting. It was great. Yeah, 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 man. Oh, let me tell you, I, I can't wait to uh, to get you back down here sometime and get on these keys and do some work. Now, so this is just a really wide spectrum of stuff that you bro do, bro. Um, do you are you still playing on any capacity anywhere? No. No, okay. uh, I have a couple of friends who are still doing music and people will call me for ideas or kind of just to help troubleshoot through some ideas they have. But outside of that, I play at home when I have the urge to or I'll play with my daughter. Uh, like I bought a ukulele, so I'll play that sometimes with my daughter. <laughs> um, but for the most part, I'm not playing out anymore right now. Wow, that's fresh, man. That is really, really cool. I want to say uh, what's up to everybody. Welcome for coming on. Love having you guys on here every Tuesday. This is Tuesday Tea Time with Icky T. And I am hanging out with Simeon Shig, author, husband, dad, accountant, piano player, superhero by night. Um, these are just a few of the hats that my man wears. Sims, when you were little as a child, did you have any idea that this was something you were going to do in your life did you was this something you'd always thought that you'd wanted to do was it a bucket list to be able to write a book no as a child i wanted to be a architect uh but then i quickly learned that i cannot draw and i don't necessarily like to draw so i kind of <laughs> pivoted away from that and then growing up uh mainly music was kind of my outlet for my creativity mm. and where did you grow up at bro Born and raised in Los Angeles, South Central Los Angeles, uh, near Slauson and Crenshaw. Yes, yes, yes. Right here at home. Because I, I asked this because for those of you watching along, uh, Simeon right now is connected with me while in San Jose. You San Jose, right? That's where you're at? Yes. Yep. So we're looking for the great return to the Southlands where you belong, bro. Maybe. But you you grew up in a <laughs> you grew up in a in a pastor's house. So you grew up as a PK. 
I don't know what it's like um, in your faith tradition, but in, in Adventism, PKs are known for for having a particular way about them. Um, what was it like growing up as a pastor's kid? Uh, I think being a PK is one of those things that kind of crosses denominations. Um, <laughs> they kind of come in two buckets. Either they're, uh, we, I'll say, are kind of squeaky clean, too good to be that kind of thing, or yeah. kind of the troublemakers in the church and everything in between. So I think that's something that kind of crosses uh, all denominations, no matter what your religious background is. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Which one were you, Simeon? Be honest. I am closer to being a square. Uh, I mean, uh -huh. I do have some skeletons in my closet that luckily none of the people in the chat can tell all the stories because of the character <laughs> limits, hopefully. Uh, but I'm, I'm closer to being a square. Nice, 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 nice. We all got a little something in us, don't we? That's that's why we need the blood of Jesus. Hello. Thank God. <laughs> so I want to ask a little bit about your childhood because this book is really a kid's book, right? What are some of your favorite memories as a child that 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 stuck out to you? What what are some things that you just when you think about childhood created a sense of safety for you? Um, as a child, creating a sense of safety. So I come from, I have two older brothers. And so I always knew that no matter what happened, they would not let anything harm me, uh, as well as my parents, but also my brothers as well. Um, my brothers could also possibly at times be my tormentors, but <laughs> yeah. uh, they were always my protectors and weren't gonna let anything happen to me. Uh, as far as kind of growing up in the church, uh, I just kind of remember basically always being in church, always being at Bible study, uh, any service we had to go to, needed to go to, uh, I was there. I have a joke that I tell people now that I'm probably about 72 or 75 in church years. <laughs> if you kind of add up all the services I've been to. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't change any of it. Wow. Awesome. Are, are there any particular stories or books or adventures that drew you in as a child? I read a lot of uh, Goosebumps growing up, kind of in that yeah, Goosebumps. elementary into junior high. I remember one of my classes, we had a lot of book reports, which I think mm -hmm. kind of uh, stifled my love or lack thereof for reading. And I had to kind of get back into the groove of reading. I'm still having trouble like completing larger books per se. Um, but growing up, just the kind of joy in people's face um, in church is something I, I definitely remember and hold dear to my heart. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, uh, Dwayne, Dwayne said, that's what big brothers are for. That's what big brothers do. <laughs> truth, truth, Dwayne, you speak truth. I've got a big brother too, man. I, yeah, we, 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 I don't know where we'd be, right, Simeon, without our big brothers, bro. <laughs> right, right. So as an adult in the community that you live in, you are doing some really good things, man. And thank you for doing that because we need more good fathers and good husbands and good CFOs and good musicians and good authors to be able to paint the world that we live in to create more reconciliation, um, especially during a time that we're so divided. What do you credit your success as an adult to? Um, once again, definitely to my faith, uh, my God, Jesus my parents, my family, and just kind of always being around um, good people, as well as my dad ran a drug and alcohol recovery program for the majority of my life. And so kind of hearing those those stories of what can happen if you veer too far away uh, from the faith or you make some incorrect decisions in your life, kind of always having that kind of fear of that pain uh, has also kind of helped me stay closer to being square, I'll say, uh, than mm. some others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I was so impressed by your dad. You 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 got me an appointment with him one time to just go look at some stuff. And so I came over to your church property and across the street, uh, your dad had like a thrift store and then there was like a food bank and there was a pantry and all this stuff that he was doing, not for the sake of fame or glory or for people to say, wow, you're amazing or, or to get a bigger paycheck, but literally for the community. All of this work was for the community, which impresses me because too often, I think we have too many famous ministers, if you know what I'm talking about, and not enough uh, uh, people who are grounded to doing the work of service 
uh, in their personal as well as their professional life. Is there something that you could think of about your dad's ministry that really stands out for you? Um, well, before I, I go there, it wasn't until maybe junior high or almost high school that I realized that my dad was an anomaly. Like I thought that mm. every pastor helped the community and looked out for yeah. the church and fed people. And I thought that was the norm because I mean, I grew up in my dad's household. So it wasn't until maybe end of junior high, high school that I realized that too many pastors, I'll say, um, mm. preach on Sunday or will teach Bible study. And that's the extent of their ministry. Mm. And there are people in this world that are really hurting that need like literal food, right? And they Ooh, need literal food. Um, and so I'm, I was very blessed to be uh, alongside my dad and my family and the church, love it to me, um, which is closed, but still was so impactful in Los Angeles. Um, I can tell story after story of the love of God working through my father. Um, we had a, if you've been to our church before, been to the church before, we used to have a green ribbon. And it was something that we would pin on every single person that came through the door. And the story of the green ribbon is a very simple one, but so impactful. One time my dad was down near Skid Row uh, feeding the homeless and he gave someone a hug and the lady started mm. crying as like, it, was, it wasn't just a little weeping, he said, it was someone that had really been moved to tears. And she said it was the first time in a long time that someone had touched her wow. and they didn't want anything from her. Wow. Right. So think about that. If you're in the streets, people do things to you or for you for something in return. But my dad was showing yeah. genuine agape love and just wanted to show her love and nothing more, nothing less. And so kind of having that mindset of helping people is something that I've always uh, admired of my dad and my family uh, and was able to kind of participate in that growing up and still to this day. Wow, man. That is so good. That That is a way to model the love of Christ into the world. And we need more people like that. We need more ministers and we need more members like that as well. To right. so not just be weekend warriors for Jesus, but to, right. to do it all the time. That's great. When you sent me over there, we were just starting a, a thrift store at, at our church too and doing a lot of community connectivity. And in my mind, I was like, yo, man, this is like something that, I want to do because I know it's going to be meaningful for others and I don't feel like enough people are doing it. And I thought I was being pretty like this was, uh, you know, this is going to be pretty, pretty fresh and new. And when I came and hung out with your dad, I was like, dude, this guy's been doing this for years. <laughs> I should have right. been sitting at his feet learning how to do this for 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 decades now. So, yeah, fantastic, man. I, I, I'm, I'm glad that I had the opportunity to run into your 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 family um, on different occasions and, and learn from them. Thank you for that. Back to our book. So no all of this kind of really just leads back to our book, my man. Why was it important to put this book out for you? Now, actually, before we say that, can you just give us an idea of what the book is about? For everybody who's watching long may have no idea what the book is about. Can you can you pull out? Can you show us the cover of it, of, of the book, and tell us a little bit about what the book is about? So I have a copy here. The book is entitled Manners from the Moon. Mm. Can you guys see that? And yeah. so if you look closely on the back, anyone who knows me or has seen me around, the character, oh wait, this side, there you go. The character on this side is modeled after my mom. Um, she's recently cut her hair to have a, a, a little mini fro, which is amazing. But before that, she had uh, locks. So this is a uh, pre-haircut, my mom. And she has a saying that she's used often with all of her grandchildren, which is simply, I love it when you use your manners. Um, and so uh -huh. I kind of have been chewing on that for a while as the old preachers would say, uh, and kind of work this story together about using your manners uh, to, to basically everyone that you come in contact with. And I thought it was very important also given our, our last presidency, don't wanna to spend too mm. much time there, but just kind of giving a tangible example of what we should be doing as, as humans before we can deal with, the, deal with the Christian part, as humans, we need to be nicer to each other. Yeah, so true, man. So true. And I absolutely the book is timely for children and timely for adults to be to be very, very honest. So um, obviously, I heard you talk about this coming from your relationship and your childhood of your parents and your mom specifically. Did it have roots uh, or does it, did it find any roots in your faith as well? Maybe not directly. But um, mm -hmm. we understand 
that when Jesus came, we have the Ten Commandments, right? But he gave a, a mm -hmm. very simple way to break those ten down into simply two commandments, which is basically love God with everything you have hey. and love and love humanity with everything you have. <laughs> and so I think my parents modeling that for me throughout my lifetime has been such a such a tangible and impactful way. You need to be kind to people. Um, sometimes in meetings or people get road rage, you don't know what someone else is going through that day. And you could be either the thing that kind of gets them home or the thing that kind of pushes them over the edge. And so I always try to be um, mindful how I'm using my words um, and be as kind to people as possible. For instance, I was on uh, like a, a support call with our payroll company and they simply asked me, was there anything else I needed for them that day? And I was like, mm. oh, I need a couple million dollars. And the support Ooh. person just kind of chuckled because normally you just go about your day and you don't necessarily, you talk to people, but you don't necessarily listen to people, if that makes sense what I'm saying. Yeah, um, so yeah. it was an actual genuine exchange. And then she even threw out some Netflix recommendations for me. So it's having those genuine <laughs> interactions um, with people that, that I think is important to have, especially in today's climate. Yeah, man, that's ooh, that's key. I do want to ask, how come is it that you're 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 never kind to me? The text, I'm just gonna put this out there to the public now. When you text me, you you know, I, I don't get that. I don't receive that customer service love, man. What's going on with that? Let's just put it out there because now. Everybody's we, watching. I'm gonna be real. We are in relationship together. So I want to <laughs> make sure that um that you're growing uh in God's oh, yeah. love and God's patience. And I want to uh, give you chances to practice uh, your patience and your long suffering <laughs> with me. That, I appreciate that that, that it. I pre yeah, I appreciate you uh, bringing Romans to my doorstep, man, and, and making yeah. me my endurance grow. I appreciate you. Yeah, that's me. I'm here for you. <laughs> no, you're not. Uh, so tell me, this is a children's book, so we're going to keep running at it. Were you ready for fatherhood? Were not you ready? <laughs> no, not, <laughs> not at all. There, there's, I don't think there are enough books written in this world about parenting. There's no way to, anyone who feels ready to be a parent, like I, I question kind of how many kids you've been around because <laughs> it's, it's different. Like it's, there's, there's nothing there's nothing like it. Like it's, there's nothing. And I, I did my best to prepare myself. Um, I will tell one story. Uh, me and my wife, Lynette, we were in, um, Lynette. Kaiser Shout doing out to Lynette. That's my girl. We were in Kaiser doing our kind of, um, pre baby training, whatever that is supposed to be called. Sorry. The word escapes at the moment. And mm -hmm. a woman asked Lamaze, Lamaze like, class, where, whatever that is. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, and so a woman asked like, where do you get the, um, like the stuff, like the the smelling stuff that that puts the baby to sleep, and we all were so confused and thrown. And I think in, later on she asked, like, how long can you leave the baby in the same clothes for? Um, so even though I was not prepared to be a parent, I knew that I would do a better job than her. Um, so yeah. I was. It, it is what it is. <laughs> He said, look, we're going to be better at parents than that person. Oh, there it is. We are. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> oh, man. Is it true for you as it was for us that before parenting, I thought I had my life pretty darn good. I had it together. I knew things. I knew almost all of it. And then once I had a kid, I realized there's a plethora of things that I had no idea about. None. And that happens to me almost every week. Uh, the newest thing I'm right. working on right now is we're teaching Brooklyn um, to tie her shoes. And so now I have to sit down and watch videos on how to tie your shoes to make sure I'm saying the same thing over and over again. Yeah. And I'm not switching it up on her. So it's just having that, that care to do it right. As long as you care to do it right, um, I think that's what's most important to uh, being yeah. a parent. Absolutely. That there, there's a sense of humility that comes with that. So as a child, uh, you grew up under two great parents, obviously. But I want to ask you, how did your parents and family circle affect your own parenting? Positive and negative. Give us a positive and a negative. What's something positive 
that your parents and family circle affected your parenting style in and what are some negatives as well? Um, positive examples of basically my parents parenting through me, I'll say, is mm. the need um, to be purposeful and being there. Mm. Um, so my mom, uh, my mom worked a regular, I'll call it a, a regular job where she had a, a start in time. So my mom was um, around as well. And my dad, who was in the ministry basically my entire life, um, he had the ability if something was going on in my school uh, and I had strayed away from being the square that I was supposed to be. Uh, my dad has been to my school, every single school, one time. And it, it, it took that that one time for him to uh, right. reassure me that uh, he could pop up and he had yeah. no issue with popping up. Um, so I think being purposeful about being there and being present is something that's very, very good. Um, something negative. I don't nothing comes to mind at the moment. I mean, I did grow up in a more my dad has a military background. So um, looking back on it, I can possibly say maybe I grew up in a household that was um, more strict. But I, I understand that when you have three African-American boys growing up in South Central L.A., you have to set the rules uh, and be the law in the house. Um, so one thing that we're trying to do more is kind of give Brooklyn, who's almost three, uh, a little more space to have dialogue. Uh, but that comes with pros <laughs> and cons. Uh, so kind of balancing that out of. Uh, we want her to have a voice. We want her to have an opinion. But also, when we tell you eat your breakfast, there's nothing really to debate about. Eat your breakfast. Um, so I think that's... We, we, we come from a different cloth, don't we, Simeon, than the ones we're trying to it's, create for it's our different. kids. <laughs> right. I'm right. trying try to hold these conversations with them, asking them questions. But when they talk back, Mercy, I want to reach back to that old school cloth. <laughs> I know for real. Like I, I, I reached out to my my parent buddies and my parents and other parents that I know, yeah. basically asking, how do you teach a kid to not hit without hitting them? Without right, right. What, what's the answer there? Because the, the talking part wasn't working. <laughs> well, it, didn't, it wasn't working consistently. Um, yeah, so we're trying yeah. to find ways. Like, how do you teach someone not to hit uh, without hitting? Like. Please shop yes. to the services. I do not beat my daughter. Don't send anyone here. But that was a conversation I had with my friends. Yeah, yeah. This this is true. Sister Taylor said the balance is tough. Ooh, true. So true. So true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so let me ask then, as we're talking about this, South Central, three African-American boys in a in a neighborhood that um, has found itself to be a desert for quite a few things, what was like? What was that like for you growing up? Did you feel any pressure to be anything more than who you were? Um, did you have to be different outside of your home than when you were in church than when you were at school? How did that work out for you? Um, my, if you if you talk to my mom, my mom will tell you, and my dad will tell you too, that basically I had three fathers. I had my dad. And I have my two older brothers. So anything that my parents, anything that I was able to basically get past on my parents, and it wasn't that many things, uh, my yeah. brothers were there to make sure I was still in line to the point of, I remember in high school getting a flyer for a party and getting like my parents kind of approval, like almost approval uh, yeah, to go yeah. to a party. And my brother seeing kind of where the party was and what schools were invited. He was like, no, you can't go. And I'm like, but mom and dad said, and my brother was basically saying, like, I said, you can't go. And that was the end of that discussion. Um, so <laughs> definitely having uh, those protectors around uh, yeah. was very helpful. I didn't have to be anything that I wasn't. For instance, I would walk home and mm -hmm. there were guys that um, live on the block behind us that I grew up in elementary school and the beginning of junior high school kind of playing football with, riding my bike, um, going to the movies with, but around junior high, people were making um, different choices than uh, we sh they should have made. And so we had to kind of part ways. And so as that kind of friendship kind of grew apart, um, there were some challenging moments, but like I said, I had two older brothers um, and as long as I can get home, I was I was fine. Um, so nothing, nice. nothing crazy ever happened. I was always able to, uh, 
either directly hearing from God or hearing the voice of my parents or my brothers, for the most part, was able to make the correct decision more times than not uh, and not get myself into too, too many um too many bad situations. I I didn't avoid them all, but I got yeah. away from most of them. Well, the the goal is to be able to to have kids that grow up to be to be good adults that are able to invest back into the community. So, um, and I, I I could say fairly confidently that you are you are that, my friend. So, <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's do this. Welcome, by by the way, welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome on. If you got any questions, drop it into the comments. I will ask it to Senor Simeon himself, and then we'll watch him struggle to answer those questions. So feel for free real. to drop it in. Thank you for your <laughs> thank you for your great comments. We are watching along, and it's been a lot of fun to uh, get that engagement. We're moving into a segment that I call three two one. Every one of my guests every week that come on do the three two one with me segment, and it's basically their three two one hacks. So. Um, Simeon is going to give us three tips or three hacks on how to start writing a book. So if you've been interested in this, this is a time for you to key in and listen. Um, then he's going to give us two tips or two hacks on how to become a better dad. Everybody should be tuning into that, whether you're a dad or not. It's just really good advice. And then finally, he's going to give us one tip on how to manage your finances. It sounds like there's going to be a, a, a stimulus coming back around. And there might be some opportunities to get a little bit of extra budget. Um, and so some this tip may really just help you a, a lot. So key in. This is our three, two, one segment. I am with Simeon Shig, author, husband, dad, musician, CFO. Simeon, hook us up with three hacks on how to start writing a book. Uh, number one, start writing. Like, don't worry about the writing. Don't worry about uh, verb tense. Just start getting your ideas out. Um, like I use Google Drive, Google Notes, whatever it is on my phone, and I just typed out ideas and I've been doing that for a while. I kind of have three or four kind of ideas that I want to finish for one of them will be my next book at some point this year. Um, so I first idea, first hack is start writing. Um, start writing. Number, number two is to give yourself a deadline to finish. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a person that kind of starts lots of random projects and I don't always finish them. And so this book was, um, a test of myself to make sure that I could start and finish something. Um, so number one, make sure you start writing. Number two, make sure you finish your idea. And then number three, be open to feedback. Um, uh, sometimes we think what we've done has is so perfect and we don't want to accept any criticism. And I know I struggle with receiving criticism. Um, so be, being open to feedback and criticism is very important. I think those are three pretty straightforward hacks for that. Those are fantastic hacks. I have a question by Edith and she asks, what grade level would you say that your book is? I think the idea for the book is for parents to read to the child, but I do think mm. that early readers um, there are some difficult words in there, but because of the repetitive nature and some of the cadence that I use, I think it will be uh, available for early readers uh, right around probably starting elementary school. Wow. Just around elementary school. I hope that helps your your, your question, answer your question. Simeon, just before we go to uh, to your second two tips, can you just read us one page from the book? Yes, I can do that. Um, let's see. No spoilers. Uh, let's see. How can I do this? Can I do this? Yeah. Ah, I can do that. Um, so I'm going to read Wolf. I'm backwards. There we go. Wolf met with every running creature, every jumping creature, and every crawling creature, no matter how great or how small. The message was repeated with diligence and haste to spread the simple message, to use your manners in every way. Then on the bottom we have, please, thank you, you're welcome, and I'm sorry. Wow, so good. Yes, thank you. And Wolf is one of the main characters in this story, correct? Yes. 
very good. Hey, by the way, if you're watching along at the end of today, we're going to give one of these books away. So stay in with us, keep rolling, and we'll see who gets one of these manners from the moon. Okay, going to tip number two, bro. Two tips on how to become a better dad. Um, make time to listen to your children. Uh, sometimes as adults, um, we do know best. So I'm not trying to pretend that I don't kind of sometimes get that mindset, but taking time and giving space um, to listen to your children. Uh, like I said, Brooklyn's almost three, has a wonderful vocabulary, and she will tell you why she needs to do what she's doing. Uh, even though I still might tell her no, giving her that space to, to speak up, uh, especially being a little black girl, um, it's important for her to understand that she has a voice and should speak up and I'm doing my best. And my wife has to remind me from time to time to give her that space and make that room for her to uh, voice her opinion and concerns, uh, even though I may not want to listen at the moment, uh, given that space. Um, so that's one hack. Number two uh, is to not focus on, sometimes as parents, we focus on the things we didn't have growing up, but we also need to make sure that we're carrying those things that were positive for us that our parents gave us and putting those into our children as well. Um, so. Um, I know that there are people who have traumatic childhoods and have struggled with things like that, but hopefully there was something important to you, given to you from someone older, some type of parent figure that you can also give to your children. So I think those two things are, are great hacks. Ooh, two good hacks for you out there who's trying to be a better parent in the world. Excellent. That also, that also probably, yeah, it, it does. Um, also work for those who are mentors, right? If you're being a mentor, some yes. kind of uh, father figure or big brother figure or mother figure or, or older sister figure. That's that's These are good tips that you could use as well. Very good. Right. Um, Jillian asked, how is it working with an illustrator? Um, it is, so I'll try to make the, the longer them, story as short as possible. Yeah. No, 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 no. Um, my, I actually finished this book in 2019 and started working with an mm. illustrator who during our kind of process gave me a price. And then once we kind of got more involved, um, wanted to renegotiate the price. Uh, and because I basically paid for this book myself, um, along with help from the publisher, at the time I didn't have anyone else to help pay that bill. So I had to basically stop the completion of the book because I couldn't afford the illustrator's new work. Um, so I literally spent hours on Instagram uh, following different uh, hashtags and looking for different artists and reaching out and contacting people who were taking commissions. And I stumbled upon a wonderful new friend of mine, Diana, who's outside of Mexico City. And she got back to me and we started working. She sent some sketches. It was a wonderful experience uh, once I got to an illustrator that I liked their style and I knew they were wanted to work with me and complete the task. Uh, but that kind of finding an illustrator, you have to take the time to kind of find something that you like. Um, I don't have an artist background, so I, I don't know all the correct words of what I was looking for. But when I found someone that I liked, uh, I was like, yes, this is what I'm looking for. And just started reaching out to them through through Instagram. Wow. So basically, don't settle until you find someone that works for you. Right. Great. Jill, right. Jillian, I hope that's helpful to you as, as that was your question. And I hope that that takes you uh, into the next stage of you working on your book. Jillian is a genius. So we're really, Wonderful. really looking for, for beautiful things from, from that human being right there. Um, okay. Take us to your last tip, Sims. One tip on how to be better with your finances. Okay. So I'm going to give a very, very basic tip. And it might be a little bit too basic, but I still think it's a, a great principle. Um, sometimes we only check our banking apps or we check our online activity just to see our banking balance, see how much money we have left to spend. Um, mm -hmm. But you should set aside some. You should set aside some dedicated time to weekly review your transactions of what you're spending money on uh, and make adjustments where you need to. So Ooh. don't just look at the bank balance. Go through. Okay, I've been to Target every day this Ooh. week, or I've been to Subway every day this week. Uh, and if your budget can do that then that's fine. But if you're looking for ways to cut back, kind of knowing what you're spending the money on, like, hmm, it seems every Saturday I run out and go to McDonald's. Why am I doing that? And kind of digging into um, 
those transactions as well. So more than just the bank balance, look going through your transactions as well. Ah, man, I know you said that's basic, but I've, I've not been doing that. That's a great tip, man. And the reason why I don't probably like many other Americans, Americanos, is that we're afraid of what we'll find out about ourselves if we look too closely to, yeah. to, to, our, to how we've been spending our money. Right, right. Ah, oh, man, Simeon, why do you have to challenge my soul like that, man? Ah. People, because we're go friends. check out your stuff. Oh, man. Okay. I guess. I guess. Thank you. Thank you, Simeon, for that last <laughs> tip. <laughs> and for all of you out there who hasn't been doing it, I want to challenge you. Go start doing it now. Check it out. Make sure you're, you're looking at where you're spending. You're, is Amazon popping up every day? If it is, you might want to slowly roll a little bit unless you got the money for that, right? Um, right. Yeah, we tend to look at the, the, the final number. The, right. And that that's kind of it's not really telling because some of that's already been spent or it's being spent. All right, Simeon, I appreciate that tip. Those are three, two, ones from Simeon Shig, our author, our husband and our father of the day. Bro, how do you or how are you planning to share and engage your daughter on the racial travesties? that are happening in her very young world or have you talked with lynette about that and and how you will approach it one day when she begins to become more aware of it that's um she's still a little bit young and we haven't had any necessarily directly racial in instances with her uh and i pray covering over her every day she leaves every day we take her to daycare that she's safe um but it starts with what I said earlier about making sure she has a voice. I know even me as a 6'3 African-American male, I'm cognizant of how people view me, no matter how I'm dressed. Uh, and sometimes I make myself or I have made myself small as mm -hmm. to not scare anyone or offend anyone or challenge anyone. And so me having to go through and unlearn those um, habits that may have been helpful growing up to make sure I made it home safely, but don't need to continue into my daughter, me unlearning those tactics so that she can be a full person with opinions and words and ideas. And so that she has no issue with speaking up and then also ensuring and instilling in her that I will always make sure she's safe. Like even now, a couple weeks ago, uh, there are trains that run near our house. And sometimes she gets a little uh, concerned with the loud noise. So she'll go, it's a train, it's a train. And I'm like, but you're home. And so now she's learned, and she even did this, and I almost started crying. Um, she heard the train. She grabbed me and said, mm. it's okay. Don't be scared. You're home. Mm. Mm. And so mm. it's just mm. making sure she understands she, can, she has an opinion, voice that opinion, and making sure she's safe. Mm. I think that's the foundation that we're setting. Um, to set her up for the right path. And as she gets a little bit older, and then we have instances where we have to intervene, uh, we can intervene in the right way and show her how to uh, deal with people who may not like her because of the color of her skin. Mm, mm, bruh, chills. That's book number two. It's okay. You're home. You're welcome. Let me I write that down. Hold on. Let me write that down. Yeah, go ahead and send me my royalties, bro. <laughs> no. Ooh, no. <laughs> People, this is what I get from Simeon. You, you, you just saw that. I want you to notice the abuse between our friendship. Oh, that's man, that is that that is good. That's, that's very good. Okay. So recognizing that these travesties are happening in our world today, did that have any bearing in the book? Uh, as you were putting it together, you you alluded to it earlier. So how much of it? I think sharing the idea that, um, and so if, if people who know me know that sometimes when I speak, I sometimes separate my faith from what I'm talking about because I want to make sure that everybody's listening at the same time. So mm -hmm. as a human being, we should be nicer. Like there's, <laughs> that's a very simple statement, but somehow so controversial uh, with mm. some people. And then mm. on top of that, as Christians, we're called to love. Um, and so the Bible even talks about um, loving those who spitefully mistreat you, which basically mm. is the concept of people who are mistreating you on purpose. Like they saw you standing there in your fresh shoes <laughs> and they 
They stepped in mud and stepped on your new shoes on purpose. We're still called as Christians to love those people, right? Um, so sharing kindness was kind of sparked um, or uh, assisted in completing the thought um, by kind of the events of what's going on in our in our country, but as well as just humans, like please be nicer um, mm. is the idea that we I was trying to get across and hopefully it came across. Oh, in the book. man. Wow. I know you said that this was something you were trying to not divorce, but separate faith from because we're talking about kindness as humanity. But but the more you talk about sin, the more you talk about this book, the more I feel like it's just doused in in, in the deepest principle of being a Christian. I mean, right, you, right. You kept saying things like just being just be nice people. And I know Jesus didn't say that, quote unquote. But if you're listening to him in the Gospels, this is what you hear. Right. This is how he treated the leper and the bleeding woman and the children and the marginalized, that kindness. And when people stepped out of that, even his own disciples, he he had to put them back in the check over these things because, right. there was, you know, sorry to cut you off. Um, my no, mom tells cut a story. Me off, man. Go. <laughs> my mom tells a story. And when she tells a story, um, she almost starts crying every time she tells a story. And I'm kind of getting worked up, too. There was a guy who had been, um, so my dad had a drug and alcohol recovery program. And so when you're battling addiction, sometimes you go on what they call a run, which will mean yeah. you'll you'll leave the program and then you'll go out and abuse the substance. But at some point you run out of money and you kind of come back to your senses uh, and then you'll make your way kind of back to the program or back to the church. And someone who had been on a run came back um, closed, messed up, dirty, stinky, and my mom saw them. And the first thing she did was give them a hug. And the person mm. kind of backed up like, no, 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 I'm dirty. Like, I've been in the streets. Like, I'm dirty. You shouldn't mm. hug me. Because uh, it was it was Sunday morning. My mom was wearing a church suit, whatever that may be. Um, but it was important to her to show him extra love. Mm. Um, to show them that, like, no matter what state you're in, uh, you're still lovable and huggable. Um, wow. And so sometimes we, in our fast-paced society, we kind of get into this high and by and not really engaging people. And we're mm -hmm. looking through people and looking past people. Um, so just kind of getting people to kind of slow down and have genuine um, connections or conversations. It's, it's so important. It's so important. My, my, my. <laughs> yeah, man. Wow. That, that deserves a moment of pause for us to just consider Oh, man, I think that in today's church world, church culture, we we want people to be converted and to just be exactly where we need them to be immediately and don't recognize that discipleship is a lifetime process full of mistakes, failures and trip ups. And it's in those moments where we realize that God just continues to love us relentlessly coming after us that that creates transformation. Mm. I think it was, and I want to say, I, I want to give you credit for this. So go ahead and just nod your head and take credit for this. <laughs> I think it was one of your sermons that I heard the first time an example in church of someone saying too often Christians want the church to be a museum where everything mm -hmm. is pristine and clean and in place where it's supposed to be. But oftentimes it's more of a zoo and mm -hmm. zoos smell funny. We got to clean up. It's a day-to-day -day operation that needs to be uh, cleaned and fed and worked on. Um, I think that was you. I'm going to give Simeon, you credit for I'm that. I'm so proud uh, of you. Come here, give me a hug, man. You were listening. Was that you? That was. I think I'm pretty I, sure I it was you. I preface it with a story yeah. when I took my daughter to uh, to the museum. I don't know if you remember. And, and we had gone to the zoo just earlier. And then we went into the museum. And as she's looking, she's like, she was just real. Michaela was real small. She said, Dad, elephant. And, and and then she realized that the elephant wasn't moving. And she said, what's wrong with the elephant? And I didn't want to tell her the thing was dead. So the museum, right. while it looked nice and, you know, glorious, everything in there was dead. Right. But church shouldn't right. be a dead place. It's got to be a living place and living places smell. Man, right. Simeon. I was impressed. OK, I'm going to give you credit for one more thing, because um, I it's Stop I know that. a lot of of preachers and I've been around preachers my entire life. Um, but preaching per se doesn't necessarily impress me. What impresses mm. me are people who are actually doing the work outside of the four walls of church. 
And you've always been a pastor and a preacher that did that. And I want to commend you for that. Um, you took the time. So people who are watching, you may not know this, but like I grew up, um, my denomination is Baptist, Pastor Icky is Adventist. And so there are some um, differences between the denominations. And so you pulled me aside because you're going to be talking about um, heaven and hell, basically. And so you prefaced it with, if the only reason that you're serving Christ is to not go to hell, then you're missing so much of the faith. And that mm. will always stick with me. Like even in my, uh, when I talk to think about Ned, my wife or my parents, if I'm only doing things to not get in trouble, but I'm not doing anything to actually be in relationship and make them happy, like that's really a, like a poor way to live your life. And so that's mm. something that you taught me that I will always hold near and dear to my heart. See, man, I, I really am humbled, man. I, I appreciate that. And I'm glad that we can share in, in, in these moments, man. I, and I, I, too, in return, have absolutely grown um, in my in my life and in my world because of our friendship. Thank you for that. I want to ask you about the book. What what do you want kids to get when they read this book? What are your hopes for this book? What is what are you hoping that the kid can read this and say, oh, I get this that moment, right? Oh, I get it. What are your hopes for it? or adults? So I'll take it one step uh, before there. My initial goal was, with the book was to finish. <laughs> and I, I hadn't even got to, when it, before the book came out, I hadn't even got to a place of what did I want the message to be? What did I want the takeaway to be? What I, what I first had stuck in my brain was I need to finish. Um, so after doing that and I had a chance to kind of hold it and sit with it, um, I'm just going to keep drilling in this practice of, being nice to everyone, like not picking and choosing or clicking up or things like that. We need to be nice. We need to be nicer to everyone, especially given our state of the country right now. You don't know what people are going through uh, before they saw you or what they'll go through after they see you. So just trying to, uh, in a genuine way, um, make someone's day, like not just the saying, but saying hello um, mm. to people. Like you'd be surprised how many times I speak to coworkers in the hallway at work and they're kind of surprised that you're taking the time to talk to them. It doesn't need to be disingenuous. It doesn't need to be a long drawn out process, but simply saying hello to people is a great start to kind of adding more love into the world. And so yeah, the true. book specifically, um, once again, kind of just drilling in that using your manners uh, please, thank you. I'm sorry. You're welcome. I mean, those are things we can do for free. They cost us nothing. Um, wow. And it could help someone's day. Um, it's just so easy. It's so easy wow. and simple to do it. Uh, we just need to work better at it um, as yeah. as human beings and as Christians. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Our time is running short. If you have just joined us or have you been with us, I am with Simeon the Glove Shig. That's his name we gave him on the basketball court because the man was able to take the ball away from you wherever you were. It always made me very angry. Well, it never happened to me, I should say. It happened to other right, guys never. that made them very other angry. <laughs> That's, true. That's um, true. And we're talking about the book that just came out that Simeon put out here, Manners from the Moon. We've got a couple more questions. I want to talk a little bit about Net because, you know, every, behind every good person is somebody who's better. So <laughs> we're going to talk. <laughs> we're going to talk about the better half of you in a second. But yes. before we do, we've got a game called Love One, Leave One. We're coming short to our time, but I want to invite you to play with us, Sibian. Play along. Uh, we're going to put a minute and a half on the on the clock. And then I'm going to start that minute and a half runner. And I'm going to give you two options. You're going to tell me which one you love. Whatever you love, we'll keep and enjoy uh, for everybody for the rest of eternity. Whatever you don't love means you're going to leave that thing and no one can ever use that thing again. It disappears from existence completely. All right. So the pressure's right. on you to pick correctly for the rest of humanity here. Are you ready? Here we go. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Let's go, Pono. Pono is our producer. He's running our stuff from the side. And I'm going to get into the frame here. Play along with us. When I give you the two options, go ahead and comment in there and tell us which one you love and which one you'll leave. Okay? Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Mashed potatoes or rice? Love rice. Leave mashed potatoes. Ooh. Writing or music? 
Love music, leave writing. Ooh. Peanut butter or jelly? Love jelly, leave peanut butter. <laughs> Taco Bell or Blaze Pizza? Oh. Love Taco Bell, leave Blaze Pizza. How dare you? <laughs> Great praise, whack sermon, whack praise, powerful word. <laughs> That's not fair. That's literally <laughs> not fair. <laughs> Oh, Jilly said peanut butter, kill the jelly. <laughs> come on, Timmy, great, come on. Great sermon, and whack praise. And that's, oh. that's not fair. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tampa Bay or Kansas City? Oh, I know this was both. yesterday. I don't care about football. <laughs> Out of here, both. okay. More personal time or more social time? Uh, given COVID is going on, uh, more personal time leave social time all right all right sharon says powerful word okay lakers or warriors you better answer this correctly love the lakers leave the warriors ah we are i can't go home get, yeah. <laughs> thank you for playing hey we saw those, some of those good answers here on the side here Oh, uh, whoa, whoa. Yes, to Taco Bell. Taco Bell is a win, baby. They they shrunk their menu. How dare you, Taco Bell? And they took off the things that I liked. But you know what? We yeah, live man. past that. We, we like you, Taco Bell. How dare you remove the seven layer? Come on. That's the hurtful. Mexican pizza? Where are we going to get a Mexican hurtful. pizza? That thing doesn't really exist in reality except for Taco Bell. Fire right. Taco Bell. <laughs> Maybe have now, are you to do it. Maybe what? Oh. <laughs> Ask Blaze Pizza to pick it up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That would definitely change my answer over to Blaze Pizza. Right. Um, now, are you a Lakers fan, Simi? I am a basketball fan. Both my brothers uh, are diehard sports fans, so I never really had yeah. like a, a favorite team. I mean, I did ask mm -hmm. Granny, my mom, to send us some Lakers championship T-shirts. So I do have Got the T-shirts. Um, I don't own any jerseys, though. All right. Yeah, me neither. I, I'm allergic to wearing other men's names on my shirts. But, but hey, <laughs> if you like to wear jerseys, it's cool, man. Praise the Lord. I, 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 Jesus is what I right. got. That's the best I can give you. Mark, Mark with Lakers. Yes. Jillian with the Warriors. No, no. Okay. Um, we're rounding out our time. And here, just at the end, we're going to give away one of the books. Before we do, I just want to uh, let you know, if you've popped on, this is Simeon Chig, author, husband, dad. We haven't talked about the husband part. I'm going to jump into that as we finish out in that particular segment. Let's talk about your wife. Lynette was, now Nanette's on. So I just want to give her a shout out. That's my girl. Um, uh, good to see you guys on here. She is a beautiful and talented woman, Simeon. How did you trick her yes. to marrying you? <laughs> uh it's called playing the long game playing the long <laughs> game uh we met first day of high school at hamilton high school uh ninth grade geometry class room 511 um Ooh. so we were always friends throughout uh from ninth grade all the way on um so that's that's the most general answer i could give the long game nice 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 now what does she do for a living if that's okay to ask uh yeah, Ned is currently a workers' comp defense attorney. Um, she works for a company up here. There's actually a couple offices throughout the state, but she's an attorney. Wow. And, um, and I, I don't know if she still does this, but she was a professional dancer at one point. Is she still or does she still do that? Um, she has not been dancing uh, regularly recently, um, especially given Brooklyn kind of our, our kind of new schedule. But it's something that she's always loved to do. And I know she'll definitely get back into it. Mm. How, so how does your household resemble or diverge from the traditional African-American home? Um, I really only have like my home to kind of balance this off of, but kind of two working parents. Uh, we trade off dropping and picking up the baby, trying to do our best to minimize uh, the TV watching or screen watching, which has become uh, more and more during COVID um making time for baby i think these are all things that happen in uh african-american households along with hopefully yeah. lots of households across the nation um so just working eating sleeping taking care of the little baby she's not a little baby but i'm gonna keep calling her my baby forever 
Yeah, no, I feel you. I feel you. My daughter's uh, about four, almost 4'11 now. <laughs> she's like seven and uh, she's going to be my baby. But if she jumps on my back one more time, I'm going to have hernia and go to the hospital. <laughs> right. Um, right. In, in your home, how do you, as a husband, how do you prioritize and take care of your relationships? Simeon? This is imperative because uh, we need more men who are willing to be active roles in their families towards their wives, um, because that models to our children what a good, healthy relationship looks like. What are some things that you practice in your life to make that a reality? Um, trying to have uh, dedicated time when it's uh, just me and Ned versus kind of running everything kind of all together, um, taking breaks and making uh, special efforts to, if I see she's had a bad day or having trouble with something, do my best to, okay, what else can I do around the house to help? Um, just trying to, I know people talk about the wife should be the helpmate, the help meet mm -hmm. and the helpmate, uh, but that should be going both ways. So helping as best I can, taking tasks on as best I can, uh, being flexible when I need to be flexible, um, making time for all the people. And so that's, that's really mm. good. Interesting how God made a helpmate for for the man. Usually, when you when you when you make a helper for somebody, it's because they they're deficient somewhere. <laughs> right, right, very very true. Right, right. Good God, praise God for for our lifeguards who who keeps us alive, man. Thank you for that. Alive. And I, I do want to yes. encourage. <laughs> I want to encourage all of our, our our young men watching along hey um practice being a good partner for somebody now because practice makes good practice makes better it doesn't make perfect but it does make better so practice being that now to your family to your relationships to your friends the better human being you are right now when you get into that relationship the better you will be in that relationship Okay, we're going to close out right here. Our time is up. I want to thank everybody for watching along. Simeon, thank you so much for being with us. I'm going to ask you one last question, and then we're going to give a book away, and then we're going to say goodbye. But my final question is, can you just share some words of inspiration? Can you speak to our viewers who are watching along? Can you speak to that person who's going to watch this later on, maybe late at night? They're, they're looking for something, and, and they happen to fall into this conversation and get addicted and just follow it to the end. Could you share some inspirational words, some encouraging words? for our young people um, and for our married people and for our peoples here in this world, people of color, white people, rich people, poor people, share with us, my man. Could you just speak some life into the internet today? Okay, I will kind of echo two things that I've been saying uh, kind of this entire time. One is make an effort um, to be nicer to everyone. Um, that's going to help a lot of people you may not necessarily see the benefit of it immediately, but you never know um, your smile, your hello, your how are you doing, your please and thank you, how those things will help someone that's having a bad day and could possibly get them out of maybe a funk that they're in or someone that's battling depression. Uh, it helps them feel seen. Um, and so that's very important to make sure that we are seeing each other. And that can start with just being nice. And to the creative folk out there who are trying to figure out the perfect time and the perfect way and the perfect way to execute, ignore all of that and just start doing something. Um, I know you may have a, a clothing line or a novel or painting, whatever you you think that your dream is and you want to do. Um, there's always lots of little steps that need to happen before that. So just starting is um, a good a good step. Um, there's I've used this before. The the formula, like the mathematical formula for work, right? In physics, the word for work, yeah. the formula is, excuse me, uh, it's like force times distance. So I can see how much work you're doing by the energy and how far you're taking it, right? So if you have mm -hmm. a task that has a lot of, you have a lot of work to do, there's a lot of ways to do a lot of work. You can put in a little bit of energy that hopefully mm -hmm. will go a long way, or you can do a lot of energy and it goes a little bit in incremental steps, or it's a balance between how far you're going and how hard you're working. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. starting is the key to all of that. Um, I think those are the two wow. things that I've been echoing throughout us talking today. Wow, thank you, man. I really thank you for your time. Simeon, it is always a pleasure to be with you. And thank you everybody for showing up here. We're gonna give 
one of these uh, amazing kids books away, Manners from the Moon. So I was just thinking in my head, how do we do it? How, how are we going to give one of these books away? What's the best way to do it? This is how we're going to do it. I'm going to have Simeon choose someone from our comments. And when I say go, I want you to, we, we did this the last few times. When I say go, go ahead and drop into our comments. Hey, I'd like one. Give me a book, and then, um, and then I'm just gonna let Simeon watch the, the 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 comments scroll, and he'll pick one. And whoever he picks, you will be our winner. And if you are our winner, I want to invite you to go over to our Instagram page at One House SoCal and DM us your information. There, I'll be able to shoot out to you um, one of these books straight to your doorstep. Now, if you don't win. I want to encourage you to go over to our Instagram page anyways and subscribe, follow. And if you're on our YouTube, please hit that follow button for us. We're, we're trying to grow this out. We have conversations every week with individuals who's doing good things. And we want to make sure that we're putting this encouraging, inspiring content out into the world. Okay, Lauren, you started too early, Lauren. Is it Lauren? Yeah, Lauren, you started too early. Okay, here we go. So hold on, hold the book, please. Anna, I, I didn't say go yet. We're about to go. Okay, ready? Okay, Anna was the last comment. And now, now we're going to start. Ready? In three, two, one. Okay, drop it into the comments. Go ahead and, and, and put down your like a book. All right, Anna, we start, we're starting with Anna. Okay, thank you, Anna. I'm going to give you 10 seconds. If you're watching along, go ahead and start dropping it in. There you are. I want a book for my grandson, Cheryl Shig. Lauren, oh man. <laughs> Lauren, you get in just because you just put that comment there. Edith, I'd like one too. Excellent. Okay, here we go. Jillian's in. Hello, Mark. Hey, here we go. Autograph copy, please. Yes, Simeon, I want an autograph copy too, man. I'm going to send you my book so you can sign it. Yes, yes, yes. There, we, there it is. There it is. All right, Nina. <laughs> and uh, we're going to close it out in 10 seconds. Simeon is watching along. So if you want a book, go ahead and put it in there. Nine, eight. Seven, six, five, R, D, yes, four, three, two, one. All right, Simeon, you've got the heavy pressure of picking someone from those comments. Ready? Go. Everyone that comments it, I know already has a book. So I'm trying to look for Chug, people who. Chug. Is... Chug said he wants one. Do it, Chance. Let's do it. Alto Vice. Alto Vice says, "Book, please." Doctor Alto Vice. Oh, do do Chugs. All right, Chugs. Chugs is our winner today, my man. All right, Chuggy's Grub. We'll we'll definitely hook you up. Hey, Chugs, go over to our Instagram, um, over at One House SoCal. Drop a DM to us and uh, give us your your uh, address, mailing mailing address, and we'll shoot you a book. If I can somehow route it to Simeon, I will, and he'll autograph that for you. Everybody else, thank you so much for joining us, joining the convo, being a part of the engagement. We just love all of you all. Simeon, my man, thank you for your time today. Thank you, Pastor okay. Hickey. Until next week, my friends, stay, stay safe, be kind and have manners. Jesus loves you. We do too. God bless you. We'll see you next Tuesday for Tuesday Tea Time, where we're going to have four ladies who minister in different fields professionally um, talk with us about their journey as females, as persons of color, um, and the struggles and the victories and the hopes that they have for the community of faith. God bless you guys. Be safe until next Tuesday. I am Iggy Timey.